Great. So we're here today with Ray Chavello from Chavello Salon and Spa, Canadian hair legend, guru, distributor, brand creator. I mean, what else are you up to these days, Ray? <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I think you know, right now, I'm, I'm, I am, I am still working very deeply with the Chavello Salon Group right now, and and that's been a lot of fun to do, uh, sort of, kind of. Yeah, after so many years of being somewhat removed from that group and now really participating with them, um, it's uh, it's really, uh, uh, you know, it's grounding for one. It really brings you back to the fundamentals of uh, being in the hair salon. I'm in the hair salons, uh, you know, every other week I'm in all the salons and that's been uh, eye-opening for sure. And, and you know, a lot of it's familiar uh, and there's a, a lot of new things there. So I'm really enjoying that part of it. And of course, uh, you know, we're involved in the uh, collective beauty brands world with uh, our brands uh, back a bottle and uh, color space and really uh, getting this these two beautiful brands off the ground and into the world of uh, of hairdressing. And that's great. So what made you start Bob back a bottle? What, what is back a bottle all about? Gosh, well, um, you know, I, I think there was. Um, you know, you know my background with Aveda for you know forty years practically, and uh, so I, you know, I've I've made products before. I had the very good fortune to be involved at a very deep level of uh, creating for for that brand on a on a national international level. So uh, I've always enjoyed the process of making product, and with Back of Bottle, uh, really, um, it was um, there was a void. I I, I couldn't find. What I was looking for and it didn't exist so you know because the world doesn't need more products I mean there's lots and lots of products uh maybe too many some some might say um but you've got to make better products and you've got to make unique products uh I think to to be of service and be of value of purpose you know otherwise it's just another me too thing and uh, we really uh, approached it with is there an opportunity isn't there an opportunity we saw an opportunity with back a bottle to make something that was very responsible in, in a very clean way because I, I'd been involved in uh, um, just doing research and looking at ingredients and, and actual ingredients and what they actually do and what they don't do for that matter. Uh, and ingredients that have been used for a long time that are still being used and those that have been very clearly identified as being harmful, uh, harmful in, in very serious ways uh, to human beings, which was what I was really concerned about because working in the hair salon and working in the hair salon industry, this is, this is about people. This is, this industry is all about people. And um, so I, you know, we, we start to do the deep dive into what are, are these ingredients that, um, that are clean and what are, what are, what are everybody's clean lists and what are they talking about? And so, you know, through that research, uh, we, we recognized it was an opportunity to do something, not just clean, but make it a very high performance clean. And that was very challenging because it had never been done before where you took innovative new ingredients that had never been used in our industry and take an approach that um, was quite different than the standard off the shelf. Here are the four basic ingredients. Here's how you make a shampoo. Here's how you make a, a foam. Here's how you make a styling product. And we said no to all that. We said, no, no, we don't want to do any of that. That's why it took four years uh, with an amazing group of, of hairstylists, uh, very, uh, very specialized, but we have very specialized people in different categories of hair types. And, um, and we, we took that approach that said, look, we're going to make this first and foremost, we're going to make it an extremely high performance uh, product. And that's got it because no one's going to buy clean just for the sake of clean, but through the performance, we use that voice of performance to be able to say, hey, you know, it's it's a high performance product made for hairdressers and for consumers, but it's also really made responsibly. It's made very clean with a lot of thoughtfulness behind it. So we saw a void there. We didn't see, we saw clean, we saw clean green. We didn't see clean green, high performance in a sustainable um, methodology or approach. So that was, it. That was the opportunity. Well, there's a lot of boxes that you have to check off to be to be clean, sustainable. Like there, there's a full gamut of of things that you can do and ingredients that you can include. Um, definitely, technology has changed in terms of uh, manufacturing, and it certainly takes a long time to develop a brand, especially when you're testing and you have something really specific in mind. Like you said, with the team of hairdressers and stylists that you're working with that, you know, want something, a specific kind of hold or a specific kind of texture. 
takes a long time to produce. It's something. a long time. There's a lot of no's and rejections <laughs> that take uh, place. Yeah. Right? yeah. You, know, you think you have an amazing, you know, formula and you bring it to the team and you get a lot of you know no's for good reason. And that's that's the learning process. That's the process you go through. And then, you know, you go back with all that input and then you, you know, I mean, there's a lot of subjectivity in there too, right? What well, one likes, one doesn't. But um, we try to make the most consistently high performance product to achieve the goals of what that product should do. And, and, and really, I mean, for us, it was really important that our products were really flexible too, that they had a malleability of, you know, that you could... Um, layer them together, mix them together and layer them without any, you know, uh, negative residue. And so that in that way, we thought, you know, you don't need as many SKUs. You just need, you know, the right basic SKUs to be able to mix together. You can create anything. You can customize, which is really a big part of our ethos is really, um, you know, really celebrating the uniqueness that lives in each one of us. It's a very diverse and inclusive ethos that we uh, we practice and I mean, growing up in Toronto, Cheryl, you know, it's the most diverse, most inclusive and diverse city in the world. Mm -hmm. so this that puts your products to a test, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it, it sure does. And you're absolutely yeah. right, it does. It, it really has to stand up to, to that test. But also, you know, when, when we think about those things, it comes very natural for us to, to think in that way. We don't, you know, we grew up that way. You know, I look around in your classroom and you had, you know, 20 different nationalities in your class, different languages, yeah. different foods. Yeah. So for, for us, you know, and, and whether it was, you know, Chevello uh, or, or any of our programming and you've seen any of our imagery or shows or anything like that, it's always been a very, very much way. very inclusive and very diverse approach to beauty and celebrating the uniqueness in every one of us and making making that the opportunity, not not uh, not a negative. So it's been great. It's been really right. good. And, and so how many products um, in total, how many SKUs do you have? There are 25 um, and there's a candle, which we we created a candle for, for the holiday season and it did really, really well for us. So um, look for more candles and, and a little bit more of a, you know, a little, I think we might see, uh, you know, a few other things that will be more lifestyle you might call, uh, but uh, still inclusive in our in our ethos. Sure. Well, I mean, if you're thinking about um, things that are healthy for you, you also think about self-care and self-care is kind of a, a bigger umbrella of, of products and potential. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, if I had my druthers and could do anything I want. I, I'd be making a lot of different products for different things. You know, I really I really love making products and I love coming up with ideas and I love uh, the approach that that myself and our team take when we think about a product uh, it's a, it's a real fun process very challenging super fun process but when we get it right we're super proud it's just like so exciting to have something that didn't exist and you've you know you've created something that um that other people are loving and you know and it's the reason we do it yeah i'm interested in the scents how do you decide on what kind of scent you would put in your products because scent is so personal for people right oh, like yeah. you have a, it's kind of a no go if it's not a good scent or or it's like yeah I yeah, I want to eat this it's so good. <laughs> well, you know, and, and you said it. It's it's so subjective. It's mm -hmm. so subjective. You know, uh, something that that someone loves, someone else has a very negative experience because it triggers the olfactory, which triggers a memory. So mm -hmm. aroma and fragrance is attached to memory. Mm -hmm. And so there are certain fragrances that we could say more universally, but not entirely, are more favorable. One would be vanilla, for example. For vanilla is a, a very popular fragrance amongst many people because it reminds them of baking, of whether you were coming home from school and mom was baking, um, you know, and the, you, you know, just walking into a bakery and the smell of vanilla is one of the first things you smell. And so that's a very pleasant and very popular one. Um, but uh, you know, what we tried to do was uh, we came up with eight different fragrances. We um, we tested probably, I would say, at least uh, we tested five times. And each time were at least 100 people that were in the test pilot. So um, and it's blind testing so that no one knows what's going to happen. And um, I, I honestly, it was very interesting because the things I really liked were not necessarily what everybody else liked. And that was proof. Right that it wasn't exactly as I thought. Uh, in fact, well, one point I only wanted to have one fragrance for the whole lines, but we landed on eight that were yeah. that were quite popular. And um, the, the, uh, the approach for fragrance for us was let's not make anything too strong. Mm -hmm. 
obviously it'll be, it's got to be botanical. It's got to be, you know, it's, it's a natural aroma. It's a botanical aroma. There are no synthetics in the aroma, but the, the, and which means that they dissipate very quickly as well. So these are not, these are not synthetic and synthetics will last all day. These are, these are not intended to do that. These are intended to dissipate, be very soft. Uh, we chose very gender neutral uh, fragrances, which was very important. We didn't want to have anything that was too spicy, too woodsy. We didn't want to have anything too floral, which might lend itself. You know, so we were we really straddled in the middle and and created uh, these really beautiful blends. None of them are the same. They're all quite different, but they're they're quite beautiful. Uh, my my favorite is we call it English pear. That's our internal name. But it's for example, the top notes on our pear, plum, and bergamot. In the middle, you have lemon sage and basil and then it ends off with sandalwood cedar wood uh and patchouli it's like it's killer it's so wow good. That's just it. like just like a fragrance just like you would purchase a fragrance it's got its its top its middle and its base notes um and again when you produce something for yourself you can't always produce what you like because you, you can maybe start there, but in the end, it's about selling it to your customer base, right? So I, I love that you did a survey for the sense. Yeah. I think it was a smart idea. Yeah, yeah. Well, and you know, it, it still happens, and it's actually somewhat regional, which is very interesting. Sure, I didn't realize this, but there's also geographics that have associations or affiliations to certain fragrances that you wouldn't find elsewhere. Now I've come across that where people told me they things smelled this it reminded them of something and that it they they'd had more than one client come in and say that that's what they thought it was. And I was really like, it's a head scratcher. You got that many people, like three saying the same thing would be very surprising to me. And yet on the other side of the country, they have completely a different reaction to it. And it's a it's yeah. they it's, yeah. it, it really it really is a cultural thing for uh, se uh, scent and fragrance. It's, it's very cultural. Yeah, it's a very, very interesting world. I love it. I really, really love it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, Back Bottle Bob has been in some uh, runway shows recently. Badgley Mishka just uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, we were uh, that's the second uh, second time with Peter Gray, of course, uh, as the uh, lead stylist on the show. Uh, and that's been that's been terrific, obviously, on so many levels, you know, to see our team uh, be backstage at New York Fashion Week, I, I think is uh, just a wonderful opportunity, you know, for hairdressers and a lot of hairdressers don't get the opportunity to do something like that. So we encourage our team and, you know, we, you know, we, we ask people if they'd like to go and uh, Peter's been terrific. So he, you know, he creates a team with his people and our people together and he creates this amazing team. But the one part of that experience, people think it's about the fashion and the beauty, but actually the best part about being backstage working on a show is the teamwork, the absolute teamwork that has to happen. The conditions are so intense. You're time sensitive. You've got to get the work done. The work has to be impeccable. You don't get second chances. So it has to be really good and it has to be done as a team. When somebody says, you hand me a tail comb. Five better show up. Like, <laughs> it's, it's yeah, it's almost it's almost like you're a surgeon working on your patients. You know, <laughs> you, you have to be there and you got to be fast. I had the um, opportunity to be backstage at one of the Bagley Mishka shows a, a few years back with Peter, and I he is just an incredible stylist, and him and his team always do such a great job. His work is is impeccable. Yeah, he, he's been a big part of uh, Back of Bottle as well. He's been on the product development side and uh, obviously on the uh, all the visual side of our uh, our image work, both for Back of Bottle and Color Space for both. He's been a big part of the development uh, of the aesthetic of the brand for sure. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. I was going to say, I love your aesthetic. I love the simplicity and clean, clean lines, the black and white. I mean, you're obviously, you know where it's at when it comes to uh, branding. <laughs> really good job on that. Thank you. Um, so I want to so say that uh, Back a Bottle, is there some customization or personalization involved with Back a Bottle? Or how do you, you, you just kind of mix and cocktail things yourself? Is that how that yeah. works? Yeah. I mean, there's a program, you know, you go into styling someone's hair, cleansing, conditioning, moisturizing, all of those things, of course, are available in a variety of different ways. Um, but um, the styling part of it should be the most creative part of it. There's a baseline. You want to do a prep. There's a leave-in conditioner. Um, you know, there's a there's a product called Shining Armor, for example, and that's a heat protectant. But uh, most heat protectants uh, or anti-humectants are silicone-based. And so this is a non-silicone base. It's a vegetable base, uh, silicone-like. 
uh, uh, ingredient that actually coats the hair very lightly, but doesn't make it uh, hydrophobic. So silicones make your hair hydrophobic, it means that you can't penetrate into the hair. Once you coat the hair with silicone, you're just coating on top of silicone, on top of silicone, on top of silicone. It eventually weighs the hair down, starts to crack and break and you have damage. First, silicone feels amazing at the beginning, but over time, over excessive use, it's not necessarily your best friend for your hair. So uh, shiny armor is amazing because it does actually penetrate as do all of these products. All the back of bottle, one of the character, very unique characteristics of it is these products penetrate into the hair. They don't sit and coat the hair like many styling products do, right? And then you have to really, you know, you have to manipulate them and brush them and add heat to get them to really do what you want. This is when you want hair to feel like hair. These products are very, very much designed to have hair still feel like hair, beautiful hair, soft hair. And um, so when you mix them together, you can get more hold, less hold, depends on what you're trying to achieve. Uh, they're really quite uh, quite unique that way. We actually work with a skincare chemist when we started off because I didn't want hair care in the traditional way either. I, my own hair being you know curly and and it's fine hair. It, you know if I put an oil on my hair, any oil, it would just weigh and separate. So we have a we have this beautiful. I have to show you this is this is the packaging. I hopefully you can see it here, and. Mm -hmm. You see the bob on oh, that nice. cost on the side. And it's a beautiful, this is such an elegant bottle that comes out of this box here. I'm going to show you. This is the oil? Oh, this yeah. Is, so this is the, the yeah, this is the high hydrating oil. And this is, oil, you know, a lot of people with fine hair, medium fine hair who have never been able to use an oil. This is a very beautiful oil. You can use it on your hair before, wet and dry. Um, really works over time, softens your hair, adds a little bit of shine. It's really amazingly versatile. It's also beard oil. You can use it in a number of different ways. I use it, I use it just as a moisturizer, as a skin moisturizer, because sure. they really are, you know, they are, they have the skincare. Multi-use. Yeah, multi-use. Yeah. And and I love the fact that it it is um it's like a shared unisex in terms of the the packaging, the style of it, and the scents, um, and the usage. Yeah, yeah, we we very much, you know, we certainly appeal um, to a, a broader scope of, of very aware uh, people. And, and I would say that younger people in particular, because they are aware of the damages that can be done to the human being through absorption through the scalp. Scalp absorbs five times more than any other part of the body. It's got more follicles per, per square inch than any other part of your body, hopefully any other part of your body. And, uh, <laughs> and therefore... It absorbs uh, at an enormous rate. So anything that sits on your hair, you know, shampoos, conditioners may not sit on your hair very long, but you're putting styling products that end up staying and spraying on your hair for the entire the entirety of the day. You're going to get penetration into the papilla. You're going to get into the bloodstream. There's no question about it. So you have to think about this. As a hairdresser, you have to think about what you're putting on your client's heads. As you're spraying products into their hair, as you're putting products in your hair, you have to think about what they, you know, what benefit uh, or what might not be a benefit for them. So this is where this journey started. We wanted to make sure that as the clients came in and, and we we were the ones hopefully that will help educate. Um, and I'll tell you, the, there are a lot of consumers that are super, super knowledgeable about you know damages to endocrine systems, skin irritations. There's all kinds of things that can happen and some really serious things, you know, leading to cancer as well. And of course, that's all a, a bit of a, you know, it's a lottery, if you will, you know, in life to get that sick. But why contribute? Why add anything that might contribute to it? That's just if you know better, don't 100%. do it. Yeah. yeah. You know, that that's that's the way I live and have lived for a long time, too, is just about, you know, uh, taking care of your body from the inside out as well. Um, you know, you talked about scalp health. That's a that's a big subject these days. And, and there's a lot more information about it. Like you said, the consumer is a lot more aware of scalp health. And this is why using uh, products that are free from toxic ingredients is so important. Yeah, I mean, there, there's a couple I'll tell you that are really nasty. The phthalates, parabens, and yes. uh, SLS uh, sulfates. Those three are the, the big nasties that you want to stay away from. You know, they're just... They're just bad. They're bad for everything. They're bad for people. They're bad for the environment. They go into the food system. I mean, plastic microfibers. I mean, they, these these are now in the food system. They're in every one of us. We don't know if, what they're doing to us yet. There's not enough science to really tell us, but they shouldn't be there. And they should, certainly shouldn't be in the water, shouldn't be in fish. They shouldn't be anywhere, but they're yeah. everywhere, right? And so they're, they're the nasty ones. But, you know, we use plants uh, a lot. We use plants because plants are incredibly powerful. They're so, so potent and they can do a lot of good, especially on the skin uh, and on the scalp. So a lot of what we work with are ingredients that we know 
um, you know, even as a secondary function, sometimes as a primary function, but even as a secondary function, even as starting lift um, volumizing spray might have, you know, it might have something in there like bayberry fruit, it might have something in there that really we know that if it's sitting on the scalp, it's going to help promote better scalp health, just mm -hmm. better scalp health. Right, you need to keep your you need to keep your scalp clean. A lot of people don't shampoo their hair anymore. Um, they like to shampoo their hair once a week because they don't want to blow dry it. Mostly, that's the main reason for it. Mm. Right, <laughs> and, and you know I get that. I get it. it's a it's a pain. It takes time. Well, I just did it for you today, though. I know. Well, well you, you know you look you look you, you look great. You did a good job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you look great. The color's beautiful. Yeah, you look great. Um. But, but yeah, you're right. You know, especially dry shampoo, it builds up. People just use it like crazy during the week and you're building up on top of it, on top of it. And then that's actually um, you're just covering your scalp. It's not allowing it to breathe. And and what kind of ingredients are in your dry shampoo that's actually not good for your scalp, like you said, which is just absorbing into your bloodstream. That's it. hundred percent. You got it. And, and so I'm just promoting, you know, helping, you know, I was, I was that hairdresser who never used to ship. It was only because I didn't like my hair frizzy. I didn't want it to get frizzy. I use conditioner every day though. I, I would rub conditioner into my scalp and into my hair just to hydrate it, but I didn't shampoo my hair as often. But I think, uh, you know, uh, I think people should really be aware of their scalp. They should look at it and make sure that, you know, changing seasons, drier climate right now in the winter time, uh, you want to hydrate. And that oil, for example, that oil, you can sleep in it. You know, it's beautiful oil to put all on your scalp overnight. Um, you know, you, you, you won't have any excess oil whatsoever in the morning. It'll give a nice balance to your scalp. There's, there's, um, there's a lot to be said, obviously there's a, a lot of beautiful, um, I, I think a lot of beautiful plants that, uh, there's the, there's, there are those that are really focused on hydration, but there's anti-inflammatories. Um, there are, uh, deep cleansers like esters, like, uh, jojoba esters are really great at, you know, cleansing at the same time. But we're, you know, we, we're borrowing now from the skincare world that has been yeah. exfoliating beautifully and hydrating very beautifully and layering these products. And that is what you're going to find in back of bottles. A lot of that same thinking went into all the products, even, you know, even though they weren't there to just sit on the head, but while they were doing what they were doing, they should also know they're on the, they're on the scalp. They're going to penetrate, right? They're going to go into yeah. Well, I, yeah, I call that the uh, the skinification of hair, of hair That's products, right. because we right. we're, were thinking, you know, outside of the box in that way. Uh, so uh, let's let's talk about color space. So right. That's... you created a color brand, and and why did you create a color brand, and what's it about? Well, you know, Lupe Voss uh, is one of the reasons that that color space exists. Lupe Voss and I have been, uh, you know, long time allies uh, worked together for many, many years uh, in, in our previous life. And I consider her to be one of the top, really the, one of the top educators in, in North America, for sure. I mean, top five, you know, there, she lights up a room like no one does. I mean, you know, she's just this genuine, kind, uh, wants everyone to be better. And uh, you don't, you know, not everyone has that disposition, you know, they, that they really, really genuinely care. And, uh, you know, her, her knowledge on hair color um, and technique, uh, all of that were all inspirations for color space. And my relationship with her, uh, we started talking very, um, you know, very sort of matter of fact, kind of casual. And then we started doing research and it wasn't, you know, for certain that we were going to do it. But we both agreed that unless we were going to bring true innovation to hair color with the, you know, with the gold wells, with the L'Oreal's, with, with the Schwarzkopf's. And, you know, there, there's just, we don't need more hair color. There's lots of great hair color companies. So what we needed though was innovation. We needed some different thinking. And because we felt that we were coming almost from the outside, even though we've been on the inside, but we really are on the outside of hair color manufacturing, that our, our brains could come up with things that we thought, hey, what about and what what if? And so we found a great partner in uh, Brescia, Italy, that been making hair color. Family's been making hair color for sixty years. Who was also very interested in innovation and cared deeply about the industry as much as we did. And so, you know, if you start by caring about an industry, if you really genuinely care, uh, you you can see the opportunities. Gen you you know, if you have that intent to help, opportunities will show up immediately. So when you tend to take the opportunity and say, this is a creative opportunity, let's find a way to make this better. So we, we started to focus on 
We knew that science would be important. We knew botanicals because that was, again, back a bottle, it's, it's part of our DNA. We knew we had to bring botanicals into what we were doing. And we also uh, wanted to challenge ourselves to look at the experience of having hair color, both from the client's perspective, but also how the stylist who's been mixing hair color, you know, in a bowl with a whisk and a brush, not really much has happened very differently in a plastic bowl for the, mo for the most part. So we started to look at all of those things about how the hairdresser really did what they did and how the client actually experienced it. And that was our starting point or jumping off point. And so we ended up with all these innovations that surprising to us that no one else had thought of, frankly. We were like, no one's ever thought of this? Okay, this is great. I'll give you a couple of examples. That, um, the micro dye, or sorry, the dye molecule, mm -hmm. which is essential. Everybody has a dye molecule. Everybody has to use dye molecules. And um, that's uh, one of the four basic ingredients of hair color. And so that dye molecule can vary in size. So, you know, we've all, all experienced red and red tends to fade the most because that dye molecule tends to be a little larger than a brown molecule or a blonde molecule, right? So the golds and the uh, browns uh, are, are smaller in size. So it wouldn't <laughs> penetrate the hair as well then? Is what it, would, it wouldn't because the cuticle, when once the cuticle opens up, right, there's an aperture and an opportunity now for that deposit of that dye molecule to get in there. And if it's larger then especially if the hair is compromised, if you're, you know, color on top of color and it's compromised, it can't close. That cuticle, it's going to be compromised the hinge at the bottom of that cuticle is going to be compromised and it can't shut down. So then you get, because it can't shut down, as soon as you start shampooing your hair, it comes out and that's called fading. That's what we get when we see fading quickly on red. So we looked at that dye molecule and we worked with a chemist who was a pharmaceutical chemist. His brain was thinking in very small sizes. And he said, why can't we make this dye molecule? Why can't we take it and make it much smaller? And we looked at him and he said, why can't we? <laughs> he said, yeah. why we, haven't they? <laughs> and, and so uh, we did. And we made it, you know, 30th of the size of what it was. And we allowed it to dispense in the cream carrier in the tube. So it's dispensed much more evenly. Means that it's, you know, its ability to uh, dispense on the hair is going to be much more even. But most importantly, because it's so small, when that cuticle opens up, it goes slides in very easily, allowing the cuticle to shut down. So the condition of that hair is intact. And when the light hits the surface of that cuticle, because it's completely shut down, of course, you're getting much more reflection. You're getting shinier looking hair. And it's not fading. So we have that that one, one innovation creates this healthier, long-lasting effect of hair color. Right? So that was just one. Uh, another one that was really cool was this machine that mixes hair color that we use called the Unimix. Okay. Yeah. I've heard of these. I've heard of some, you know, there's there's been a few variations of these these mixers, but I, I think they're they're brilliant because they they save you a lot of money as well. And they, the the precise, the the precision is is great, right? Yeah, the precision is great. I think for for us. We were in the lab and we were watching the you know the technicians all mixing stuff on these machines and we were like okay but this machine could mix hair color so it was a question of evolving into this but we also ours mixes it using a magnet and a motor which gives you in an aluminum uh in a stainless steel excuse me a stainless steel uh bowl which is uh has been it's acid washed food grade uh, uh stainless steel so you know it's absolutely you wash it and reuse it and yeah mm -hmm. And it's 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 great because there's no plastic microfibers coming off into the hair colors, no dispensing of any any plastic at all. And the other part of it is we're able to get a texture because of the way the magnet works in there. It just you know evolves and creates this beautiful, incredible. You could stand there for an hour with a whisk; you're never going to get the texture. You're like whipping it. Yeah. It's like making whipped cream. It's beautiful. <laughs> and um, and also we warm up. We have a heat plate on the bottom of it, so it warms it up to body temperature. Why body temperature? Because many of us didn't know this, but hair color doesn't begin to process until it reaches body temperature. So it has to wait from the heat of the scalp to heat up that hair color before it actually begins to process. That's why when people get hair color put on, and oftentimes if that hair color was stored somewhere cooler, they take, they'll ask for a tail comb, they'll ask for something, you know, they'll want to scratch their scalp with it. Uh, it's because it's causing irritation, it might be mild, but it's causing irritation because it's adjusting to the scalp temperature and it's beginning to process. Mm -hmm. So our, uh, our, our beautiful Unimix heats it up so that immediately when you put it on, it begins to process right away, eliminating that, that opportunity for irritation. 
right, so. uh, and which is probably why the um, you have the heating process happening as you're processing your hair. Yeah, well, you mean when somebody uses a, like a heat lamp or something to yeah. heat up? Yeah, we don't. We, we don't recommend that because we don't think you need to do that. Um, that's only really done for people who are really trying to speed up the process to get, you know, people who don't want to sit processing for 40 minutes. You know, you're going to cut it down to 30 or 25 minutes. And that's what that will do. But like anything, you have essential oils built into your product for a reason. So if you heat it up faster than it was intended to be, you could be, you know, pretty much taking those oils and making them uh, you know, making them absorb faster than they were designed to. So it might not compromise anything. I don't think it compromises anything, but it's not necessarily, it's not necessary. All it's doing is speeding it up. Right. Uh, and and what there's botanicals in this color too? Like, is it more of a natural base or what, what type of ingredients would be in color space? Well, color is color is color. So the additives and the way, so if you can break it down and say, well, we've got one of the elements and we've taken that and made it much smaller, right? So one of the other things we did is now we, when now the stylist is experiencing something different with the Unimix, but the client is also receiving something quite nice. It's a nicer experience to have product that's been warmed up to body temperature and put on their head. There's less sensitivity issues. Um, and then when we use botanicals, for example, our newest addition to the family is called 3D EMI. So that's our demi line. We have a permanent hair color line using ammonia. We have a permanent hair color line without ammonia with MEA as the alkalizer, right? And this is our demi line with AMP as the alkalizer. And so these are quite different in terms of alkalizers. They each do something quite different. And we, so that, that's our third line. And, the, and we've been using uh, botanicals like uh, shea butter, for example. Uh, we've been using, um, uh, and, and in, in the 3D EMI, we're using adaptogenics, which are desert plants, basically. There are six of them that we used that are, are quite interesting because in the desert, of course, there's the harshest of climates. And these plants learn to retain as much moisture and live off very little moisture. Right? So the they have very interesting properties. Again, anti-inflammatories, nourishing properties. And we understood that by using this many of them, that we were actually creating a scalp treatment. So when you put 3D EMI on, which is a glossing, uh, you know, for the most part, you're glossing, you're toning, um, you're, you actually can cover gray too and blend gray. So when you're putting it on, it actually feels cool on your scalp. You're getting a scalp treatment at the same time as you're getting this hair color service. So it's really unique. And everybody comments on it immediately. They go, oh, that feels very cool. It's very nice. And it is basically, and this is actually has, the ability to go down into the papilla and actually create healthier hair growth. It has the ability. These plants were thought of as nourishing, as hydrating, as anti-inflammatories, um, and, in and, and designed to give you healthier hair from the inside out, not just on the outside. Well, color technology has changed a lot over the years. I mean, I remember back in the day in high school when I used the frost and glow in that cap and it was just straight bleach all over my head. I can't yeah. believe it. it took me an hour just to get the cap off of my waist length hair. I mean, what was I thinking? Oh my God, <laughs> yeah. And painful and painful, right? <laughs> yeah, I still had all my hair after that, thankfully. But yeah, I mean, it's just great to know that there's products out there that are actually good for your hair that work with sensitivities that are good for your body, good for the planet, um, and that are something that you can use often and daily. I mean, I I feel like you've really thought about all of that very carefully. Yeah, we, we have, I think. And you know, the other thing we've tried to do is also make it beneficial for the salons. Um, so hairdressers, if you're listening, uh, you know, what we've done with our larger tubes, you know, these, these are tubes are, are larger, they're 120 mil, um, so that you have less less plastic caps, less cartons, less time, less you know transportation uh, emissions, all of that, and at a lesser, lesser price point. Like we're you know per application at least thirty to fifty percent less than anyone else on a price per application. So we thought about the salons, economics of the salon, the business itself too, because we're salon owners. I mean, the, there's a large portion of our team are hairdressers and uh, salon owners. All of us have been salon owners, so we we understand how thin that profit line can be sometimes. And uh, so we tried to make best effort to do, you know, to provide the best opportunities at the best price point and the best quality that we could make as well. Right. And plus with the the process of, of creating the mixing um, part of the process that you're helping also save money in terms of wastage. 
Yeah, you know, that's a very interesting point, Cheryl, because if you start using the uh, Unimix, you will start to notice that you'll need less product. Uh, you'll notice it immediately because the consistency is just, it spreads much easier and it spreads broader and broad, you can cover more space with less product for sure. So yeah, you, you'll save there as well. Right, and so how many uh, color, what's your color range? How many colors do you have in your color space brand? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot. I mean, the, the zero line, which is our ammonia free line is our broadest line. It's our most well used line. And it has uh, oh, quite a few SKUs. I'm not sure the exact number, but it's definitely over 60 for sure. But again, not crazy, like not a thousand. Not We don't need that. We, we really try to focus on, uh, we don't want people to waste money and having product that they'll never use. So we try to really narrow down what people need and uh, and work in that in that category. Also, you know, the calibration of our, our primary line, this is our ammonia line, for example, the calibration, this is the most precise hair color in the world because this is the only line where you can take a three, mix it with a five in equal parts and get exactly four, not a variation of four, but exactly four. So if you run out of product, or if you don't, you don't want to carry as much product, and you know what your formulas look like, you can really pick and choose to make sure that you can make what you don't need to order more tubes of if you want to, right? So that's sure. how so precise you know, it, that comes. It reminds me of me because I'm a makeup artist, and in, in my kit I have foundations, but I don't need to have fifty foundations. If no, you you're don't. a mixologist of whatever your craft is, then you should be able to know how to mix things to get a color that you need. I mean, technically, if you have your primary colors in white and black, then you've got everything in the rainbow, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, and 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 really what it comes down to is knowing your salon, knowing the salon, what they do, they do more great coverage, for example, and mm -hmm. what's the average age of your clients? And, you know, are you dealing with 80% gray or 50% gray? What What is your client? What kind of coverage do they like? And this is also regional, where someone might say that's covered. Somebody else might say, oh, no, no, that's blended. Right. And, and this has become very interesting for us. So we've, we've really crafted out lots of formulas. One of the unique things about this line is you can take the ammonia free line and the ammonia line and you can mix them together. And there's not a lot of brands that you can do that with. You can mix them together and get a whole other line basically with different finishes because they do have very different bases. Both of these, one is warmer, one is cooler. And the reflection is a little bit uh, less and more. So you can create more colors again by mixing the two together as we call those our hybrid formulas and they are for great coverage become the favorite uh and because again because there's so many definitions of what great coverage is sure. people in uh on the eastern part of the country versus on the western part of the country have a very different definition of what that is so we've we've really worked on on really understanding you know what does your salon do uh, and then we focus on that training and education, especially when we bring the hair color in, we focus on what they do. Not here's, here's, here's all of us here, have all of us. No, we yeah. really, no, we really try to we yeah. customize that approach to uh, help. Yeah. And really work. I mean, it works much better. Obviously they get more confidence very quickly with the brand. And well, for sure. Important. That's very important questions um, to ask somebody before they take the brand. So in terms of taking the brand as a salon owner, um, is it like, here's the whole thing, you take the whole thing, or do you get to pick and choose like you're talking about because they might have different needs in different salons? No, they're always customized. We, we, we look at everything as customized approach to it. You know, we look at the size of the salon. We know we know what they're going to need in terms of quantities. Um, but we do like to, uh, we, we don't like to bring all three of our, our categories in at once. We don't we, we don't think that works very well for us. Or do we bring color space and bob in at the same time? That doesn't necessarily, that's not always our best approach. I mean, it works for some who are really ready for that. But uh, for someone who's, you know, already using uh, maybe two other color lines already and they're, you know, they they work, they're busy, uh, we'll, we'll go in and we might start with, let's look at, or we might start actually the, the easiest entry now would be our demi line. This is the 3D uh, line. This is the easiest with, um, say, with our bleach, with our silver lift bleach, uh, along with our system, which is called the Color Space Way. Um, one of the other innovations I didn't talk about is a product called Stop. This is unbelievably cool product. It is a cuticle sealant. So after you finish doing the color, you it closes down the cuticle, seals it, and stops oxidation from occurring. It can't continue to oxidate. With other so hair color, color, it's done. You put this done. on and then you're, you're finished. It's done. You can't, and it, it won't fade. Um, so it's a, and it's basically a treatment conditioner 
cuticle sealant, pH normalizer. It does all of these things. It's quite a, quite a unique uh, product in the way that it works. Um, and so it adds a lot of shine as well because it is like a, it is a treatment basically. So we use that with our bond, which is our obviously our bond building, um, hi hydrating and bond building treatment. Um, that's our system. If you use that with our hair color, um, and bond is very unique too, because you can mix it in the bleaches. You can put it as a barrier cream. It's like one in, again, one of those products you can use in many, many different ways. Anybody that has sensitivity, even for basic color, if you have sensitivity, we, we recommend putting a little bit of bond in the product as well to cut down on that sensitivity. But this is the easiest entry because glossing, toning, everyone does. It's about 40, 50% of what most people's work looks like these days. And this is a very simple uh, program and beautiful, really, really beautiful product. This is the one with the adaptogenic. This is the one where you get the scalp treatment at the same time that you're applying it, you'll feel this cooling effect on your scalp. It's very, very unique. Yeah, that sounds like a great product. Uh, in terms of education, uh, do you offer that? And how do you offer that? Where do you offer that? You know, Cheryl, I'm, that's my background and, you know, that's Lupe's background. We're both, uh, you know, we have a lot of strength and developing curriculum and, and support. We know that hair color doesn't happen without education. And Bob is the same. You have to have education. You have to, you know, it might seem like everybody knows how to use products, but uh, this is a pretty interesting time right now in, in the industry. I think it's really, uh, it's been fun. Um, training and doing these workshops on on the Bob, uh, getting people have to use them. That's as simple as that. You've got to get people to use them. Um, with hair color, uh, we we obviously we're there. We we don't leave until there's comfort. You know, but we're and it's um, you know we're in, in person uh, again. If we do uh, 3D EMI, that's a quicker, easier in. Make sure they've got it. Come back a week later. Make sure they're fine. Um, if they're going through a full transition with uh, with, you know, with ammonia, uh, with our primary ammonia line or with our zero ammonia free line, um, that's going to be, you know, we're going to be there a little bit longer for sure. Uh, we, we're known for our support. We're known for really being there and caring. That's what we hear from everyone. They say, you know, it's been a long time since a company cared as deeply as you do. And, you know, you can pick up the phone and talk to Lupe. You can pick up the phone and talk to me. We're not huge. Um, you know, we're very personable and we care deeply. And we know that Look, I mean, if you're not if you're not comfortable with using this product, you're not going to use it. So it's not in our best interest to drop and run like so many people do. It's in our best interest to make sure that you become comfortable and gain the confidence that you need to really explore the possibilities. Because it's only at that point when you get a comfort level that you're willing to take some chances and you'll start to explore what could potentially get you re-engaged. And that's what I love about new product is it does get you re-engaged in your craft. Because a lot of people get very comfortable. I don't want to change. I got my formulas. I don't want to change anything. Right. There might be better. There might right. be better for your clients. There might be there might be cleaner for your products. Better in many ways for your product for your clients. There might be better results, long lasting, shine, no fading, less sensitivity. There might be all of these things available. So as hairdressers, we really have an obligation to keep exploring. And that I find, and we've heard this a lot from, you know, a lot of our, our salons that have gone through very successfully transition have said, I can't believe the level of re-engagement for the team because they do have to learn something new. So they have to talk to each other again about hair instead of talking about a lot of other things and unrelated. Now they're talking about their clients and what would you do and can you help me with this? And, and it builds some nice teamwork again. You know, that yeah. team you're, you're, you get you're getting feedback from each other you're getting feedback from your clients you know you're getting conversation with you and education I think we're as stylists in our industry we should be ever evolving and we should be growing and we should be looking for what's new and innovative and and good for you and good for your clients 100 percent you know that's not that's not get too comfortable get uncomfortable stay uncomfortable don't get too comfortable right that's how you grow yeah, that's the only way. Yeah. Yeah. So where can we find Color Space and Bob? Uh, uh, well, yeah, the, usual, the, usual, the usual suspects have been, uh, you know, back a bottle, uh, .ca or .com. Um, we have uh, ca.colorspacehair.com. Uh, that's the Canadian website. The U.S. website is um, colorspacehair.com and at back a bottle. Uh, and uh, at Color Space Hair, our handles on social. Great. And you're in North America? 
We are in North America. We're in Europe. We're in Italy. Uh, we, we've now we've opened Italy up. Uh, we're in talks with uh, uh, more European countries, four more European countries right now. Uh, it's a very exciting time. And uh, yeah, it's, it's transitioning very nicely. We're actually having to push back a little bit because, you know, we're the little engine that's pushing hard here. And so <laughs> we have to manage, uh, you know, to, we, we, we have a great resource team. Our team is amazing. But we also recognize that we want to grow a certain way and we want to do it right. And uh, so we don't want to tackle on too much. Actually, Europe was just a fluke. I just happened to be a cosmoprof and met some people in Italy who are amazing, amazing people. So we're we're really excited about our partnership with the Italians. They're they're fantastic. That's great. Well, if you need an Italian team, I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> Not everybody. Well, we, we, and that's one of the things that we hope to be able to uh, to do uh, in the coming year or two is really start to bring our, our people to Italy. We have an academy and we'll have access to more academies there through our Italian partners. So that'll be fun to uh, start to you know do some back and forth, maybe bring some of the Italians to North America as well. Um, yeah. Great. Well, it sounds like a lot of exciting things happening for you. And uh, it sounds like you've created a couple of amazing brands. And with all your knowledge and background, of course you have. It's, you know, you are Ray. You have created some beautiful things here. And uh, I really appreciate your your time and our conversation. And I love always learning what's, what's new and innovative with you. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much, Cheryl. And uh, you are doing an amazing job. I think what you're doing is really uh, different than anyone else. You're, uh, you know, you're really distinctive and it's uh, your talent, your eye, your vision, your, your curating, which is uh, really uh, nice to be a part of. So thank you for uh, inviting us to your party. Yeah, and thank you for your support in the uh, Beauty and Motion Awards. And uh, we'll look for your products for the diverse texture category. And it sounds like, you know, you've got that one covered so well with, with Bob and the products that you've created. Thanks so much. Yeah, thank you. Okay, we'll talk soon. Thanks, Cheryl. Okay. See you then. Bye. Bye-bye.